Today on Nerd Out, Music NFTs and SIP60. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano. We break it down, but dump, don't dumb it down. Uh, I've had off a few weeks, but we are coming back strong. I went out to see NFT Con and then also Rare Bloom. The conferences were great. It was amazing to see a lot of you in person. Thank you for, for coming up and saying hi if you were one of those people. So today we are talking about music NFTs and SIP60. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So why do we need a new SIP if we already have SIP25? Well, as you know, SIP25 defines metadata, the metadata standard for NFTs in general. It can be picture NFTs, music NFTs, literally anything you can think of. It could be an NFT that tracks a wine bottle or a shoe or, or whatever, whatever. So what SIP60 does is it standardizes fields specifically for music NFTs so that we can have uh, things like players, music players that will always know how to find the song title of an NFT that's in your wallet, um, or know all the, all the specific metadata that, that is um, very specific to a music NFT. So things like wallets can determine what is or is not a music NFT versus a regular NFT. Um, also, metaverses will need this information to determine how to treat a given NFT in in the game in, in the metaverse. So, for example, if it's an image an image NFT, they would want to hang the picture on the wall. If it's a music NFT, it would add it to the playlist in the jukebox. That type of thing. So that's why we need a new SIP, and 60 is the number we chose. So, who put me in charge of making the standard? Nobody did. Uh, the community of Cardano music creators all came together. It was a giant group of people. Um, we started on Twitter, and there was just some rumblings about, okay, well, if we're all doing music NFTs and they're all look, they all look different, it's going to be very hard for any type of player to sort through all this data and comb through it. Um, and we all came together. We had two two-hour-plus meetings uh, to, to hammer this stuff out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So all I did in the process, I'm not, you know, a, a musician, and I'm definitely not somebody who, who knows every in and out of the music industry. So I, I kind of provided support from a technical perspective about what would work best and for machine readability so that somebody, I was always thinking from the perspective of if I wanted to build a, a player or an indexer on top of the Cardano blockchain, and I wanted to be able to play like all the music that's out there, how would I want that to look from a machine readability perspective? So this, uh, this SIP contains a partial list of people who were willing to put their name on it. The actual group of people in the room was much larger. Um, so it, it, it does come from a wide group of various people on Cardano. We tried to make it as, as broad as we could in creating the SIP. I do want to give a special shout out to Jimmy Londo, who runs uh, Six City. Uh, his website is sixcity.xyz, I believe. He he does a lot of music NFTs and and popularizes artists and among others. Anyway, check out his website. He was kind of the main guy driving the process. Um, so what he did is he came up with a rough draft and a spreadsheet that we all used to look at to figure out okay, what fields are required, what fields are optional. And so we would just go back and forth among all the, all the collaborators to really hammer out what was important and what was not and what we wanted to leave up to you know, the individual NFT creators. So shout out to Jimmy. Uh, so what's in it? What is in SIP60? It's broken down into required fields and optional fields, as I said. So here's the, the complete list of required fields. So if you want to create a music NFT on Cardano, this is the recommended way to do it. So here's the fields you want and the metadata. Um, and this is what we felt like, at minimum, every song should have at least these fields. Um, you know, in some cases, if it's a single, yeah, it's always going to be track number one, but... That's, we felt that that was okay. We should always have a track number. 
um, artist is an array, so it could be multiple artists. Um, album, song title, song duration, we're using the ISO 8601 duration format. That's one of my little contributions. Um, just a standard way that we can parse and, and pull that data um, out so that we can show the duration of a song in a player before having to actually interrogate the music file. It's just a quick way to do that. Genres, we limit it to three genres. Um, any players, like you can't stop them from putting more in there, but um, for the spec, we just said if you have more than three, you're trying to, you know, game or farm the system, and any players should kind of ignore any extra genres. Copyright information, release type, that can be like single or multiple. If sometimes you'll mint an NFT with the whole album inside that. Um, back in the day, I, I did the Jameson Daniel release. He had a whole album he wanted to release of electronic EDM songs, and so that was kind of a multiple way of doing it. And then music metadata version, this is version one. So if we ever evolve this standard in the future, you know, maybe add some required fields or remove some required fields, um, then this would change to version two. And I won't go over all of them, but I wanted to show you some of the uh, optional fields, just kind of what we're thinking there. So like contributing artist, who the visual artist is for the album artwork, um, because we felt like technically an NFT could be minted without visual art, but um, so that's kind of an optional field. Distributors, um, you know, recording engineers, mixing engineers, mastering engineers, ISRC number, if it actually is released on the streaming platforms and has an ISRC number, you know, those kind of things were, you know, these are kind of the things that we felt were important, but maybe not absolutely required of every uh, music NFT. So that those things fell into this category. And then outside of that, there is, um, so is SIP60 exhaustive? No, it is not exhaustive. There will be some music NFTs that need features that go beyond the spec or maybe you're doing something a little different, um, you know, maybe you're doing something crazy with samples, whatever, that's okay. Um, it's okay for you to go beyond the spec. This spec is just kind of a baseline for what makes something a music NFT. And so we, we expect many, many different people doing music on Cardano to do things that go beyond the spec. So I wanted to show you kind of an example of what one of these looks like in, in the wild. So this is one of uh, Jimmy's minted songs out here. And you see it's got all of the, all of the required fields. And then he's got, um, he's using collection, which I believe is one of the optional fields. And he's got links down here, which is optional. So he's got Linktree, I'm assuming, for the artist, and then Twitter account. So he's he's using the spec in, in the way that you would expect it to be used. And we could look at the blockchain, scan this, quickly see that it's a, uh, a music NFT because it's, you know, it's got all those metadata fields in it. And then it's got the nice album art and the, and the song file there. So this is an example of, of how to correctly implement the spec. And then I wanted to show uh, one of the Noom examples. So Noom, we started minting um, stream tokens, and these are actually not full songs. So the only thing included in the in the NFT is 30 seconds. If you want to listen to the full thing, you've got to go to the streaming platform so that we can capture the streaming royalties from that. So if you look at the actual NFT, it's only going to have 30 seconds. And then it does go beyond the spec a little bit in having... A PDF attached to it with the streaming royalty share agreement. So these are these are two examples I wanted to give you using the spec in slightly different ways, um, but all following the same spec. So you could very very quickly and easily see some metaverse or some music player on top of Cardano, just scanning the chain and saying, or looking at somebody's specific wallet and saying, oh, what does your music collection look like in your wallet, and um, being able to play back those songs in a nice um, good user experience. So that is what SIP60 was all about. And um, it was fun to work with all these all these guys who were a little bit like herding cats at times because they're they're creative people, they're music people. Um, but they're they're really fun to to work with and I I'm thankful for the opportunity to 
kind of help walk them through the GitHub process and, and get it into a SIP. So it's, it's really cool that uh, some of them decided to put their names on it, and, and that was uh, a lot of fun. So with that, that's all I've got. Nerd out. Thank <laughs> you.